Hi, I'm Todd Banner, and welcome back to my channel. A few days ago, a commenter on a previous video I did on stock photography and pricing uh, asked how I sell images for the amounts that I sell images because uh, my average uh, selling price for images sold is, um, is higher than what I see people report um, on online forums, including the, the Alamy forum. So I thought I might talk a bit about what you can do to maximize uh, the possibilities of having higher dollar amount sales. And I'm going to preface this by saying that I don't do micro stock. Um, I never have. I probably never will. Uh, I don't think you do. I mean, if, I'm sure a few people do fairly well doing, doing micro stock. Um, but if I look at the percentage that photographers get for that, it's just not impressive to me. And even though Alamy's cut commissions, it's still, I think, a better deal than other places. Uh, and you have to understand that I've been doing this a long time, so I have it kind of down pat as to what I shoot and um, how I keyword and things like that. Um, you can't really just shoot stuff willy-nilly and upload them to a stock site and expect success. Um, you have to have some methodology about it and you have to and understand that is most likely the images that you like shooting are not the ones that are marketable as stock. I mean, if you do a lot of insects and stuff like that, you know, if you're at the top of your game and you've been doing it a long time and you have the right stock agency, you probably can do okay. But for the majority of people who are getting started, that's not the case. So you really have to think in terms of what what content is marketable. And you have to think about quality. And, you know, Alamy accepts, they don't edit for content. Uh, they accept photos based on, is it exposed well? Is it sharp? Are there no dust spots in the sky of, Im of an image? Uh, and things like that. So you can shoot a technically really good image of anything, um, and they'll accept it. And maybe it'll sell, but most likely not. If it's not, if you're not thinking about what the end user is going to need an image for. And, you know, you think about people who are buying stock photography, it's going to range from somebody doing a newsletter, a small company, somebody, a businessman like me, doing, you know, a little newsletter who is buying as cheap as possible, to large corporations with big advertising budgets who are going to pay more for an image. And you've got that wide, broad spectrum of people who use images. And you also have uh, textbook publishers, um, which of course a lot of that's online now, but still educational images are a big deal. So you really have to think in terms of what's the image going to be used for and what's going to get a person or a company to choose yours over somebody else's. So it's really important to think conceptually, to think educationally. Um, Make sure that you're keywording your images properly and be diligent. Keywording, I think, captioning and keywording are as important as the image itself. Because if the person looking for the image can't find it based on what they're typing in on a search, not going to do you any good. Or if your image pops up on a search and you mistakenly put in a keyword that your image has nothing to do with what it, what it was they were searching for. And remember, Alamy, and I imagine other agencies do as well, is they rank their contributors. So if you're high ranking and you uh, particular subject, you're really good at that subject, your images are going to get pushed up in the search. I'll tell you what. If you open up an incognito window in Chrome, just to kind of even things out, and go to Alamy and type Oak Park, Illinois in the search field and click on 
creative up in the top left. You've got new, creative, and relevant images. And creative is supposed to be curated. Um, sometimes it looks like it's exactly the same as relevant, but sometimes not. But if you do that and you look at the images that pop up, a quarter to a third of the images on the first page are mine. Some of them are old uh, iPhone photos that I uploaded through Stockmo back when uh, filtering the heck out of images was in vogue and Stockmo was really looking for that. And Stockmo, by the way, Stockmo is the Alamy iPhone uh, app that allows you to upload phone photos as stock images. But there's various subjects that if somebody type, types in a search term, I know my images are going to be on the front page. So getting seen. It's real important. Other thing about keywording, you have to be really, really careful. This is not something you just go and you type in and just you know look at the image and trying to type in everything that you see there because sometimes you may not want to put in something that's in that image because it may not be relevant to the overall image. To kind of tell you how I go about keywording is when I get back from a shoot, I upload them into Lightroom, I do a real quick scan, I find the ones really quickly that I think are going to work for stock, I mark those as picks, then I will filter to only show those images and I will do general keywording. I will do a general keyword with location, subject, and such. Then I will go back through and I will do specific keywords, but only a few. Only a few, just enough for me to find the image on my computer. And also the images are going into folders that are titled with this. I have a folder of Chicago images. I have a folder of Oak Park images. I have a folder for our forest preserves here. I have a Arizona folder. So I know where to look for images of particular subject if that comes up and I need to do that. Um, so once I've got that done, then I upload to Alamy, and I do that in small batches. I do that, I try to keep it to around 10 images at a time, and then not submit until that first batch is accepted. Because Alamy Quality Control, if they find one image with an issue, like a dust spot in the sky, they're going to reject every one of the images in that submission. So if you got 50 images and one of them's bad, they reject all of the images. And by the way, and people complain about that. By the way, that's how quality control works. You know, if you're in a company and you're producing a product and you are sampling for quality control and you find a problem, <laughs> you shut down production to find out what the heck's going on. So that's how that works. One of the mistakes that I see people make is, and I think it comes with their initial keywording, is that they'll do a mass keyword and they will not check to make sure that you're getting irrelevant keywords, that they're getting irrelevant keywords into images. And that will really kill you because if somebody does a search and you've got an irrelevant keyword and that image pops up or, or a bunch of images keep popping up in an as, as hits on a search, let's give, give you an example. Um, somebody's looking for something in the state of Michigan and they type in Michigan. And it used to be on Alamy that you, their keywords were limited to one word. You, you couldn't do phrases. So if you wanted to say Michigan Avenue in Chicago, you had to put in the word Michigan and the word Avenue as separate keywords. Problem, because anybody looking for something in Michigan, boom, sees an image of uh, the John Hancock Center on Michigan Avenue. They changed that several years ago. You can do multiple word phrases, so use that. Don't keyword single words when one word of the phrase may cause false positives. Go through your keywords. I mean, make sure they're appropriate. Um, I was looking at an image on Alamy, and it was yeah, a nice image of fall maple leaves, autumn maple leaves. and. Um, Colors were like green going into yellow, into orange and red, and one of the keywords was brown. And one of the keywords was oak, and there was not an oak leaf to be seen in here. So it's really easy to mess this stuff up. Give me another example, and this, actually one of the points I'm gonna to get to is shooting lo locally, because you know your area better than people coming in from other places to photograph. So that's relevant for keywords because you might have other photographers who are not appropriately keywording or captioning images 
in your local area. Another example of that is um, saw an image on Alamy of one of our downtown drawbridges in Chicago. And so we have, Chicago's got like almost 40 drawbridges across the Chicago River and the Calumet River, which is further south. And they're what are called bascule bridges. So they're drawbridges with a counterweight so they can open and close. And we're sort of the capital of the bascule bridge. Um, the Tower Bridge in London is a bascule bridge. This image was of one of our bridges and there was no information as to which bridge it was, what street. It just, the caption was colorful bridge of a typical street in Chicago. And the street is not typical actually. I mean, uh, I won't get into what it, what it is, but you know, it's, it's streets, the street's got some interesting, uh, as you travel along it, there are some interesting things that make it atypical. Uh, so you gotta be careful. And, oh, and uh, there was not in this image, there were no keywords about it being a drawbridge at all. There were no uh, keywords about it being a bascule drawbridge. Um, so somebody who's specifically looking for something like that, um, they're not gonna see that image. Whereas if you get look at an image of mine of that same bridge, it, it's gonna say bascule drawbridge. Those are gonna be keywords. It, stock is a lot of work. <laughs> and if you're not paying attention, things can bite you in the butt. Um, it's a numbers game. Uh, the more photos you have uh, on file, the more likely you're going to have multiple sales. And having multiple sale sales means that there's a percentage of those that are going to bring in a fairly decent license fee. So it's just that. Now, will you make a full-time income? Probably not. There were days when you could do it. Back when I was a photo researcher in the 90s, we had uh, some contributors uh, who were pulling in $100,000 a year, like 1995, on stock photography alone. I think that there are probably maybe a few people who still do that, but uh, not very many. But it's an income stream. And if you're a freelancer, you need to have multiple income streams. This is just one of them. So you need to understand that most sales are going to be low dollar amount, probably $50 or less. But if you get a couple a month that are over $100, uh, you know, you're always going to get a check that month. If, if you gross $125 a month on Alamy, you're going to get a check for that month when those funds clear. So anyway, I thought I'd show some images. Um, one, uh, this month, February 2022, started off with a bang because my first sale was an over $300 sale and it was an image that I took in 2012. So it's a 10 year old image. So that's the cool thing about stock photography is you never know when an image is gonna sell. Um, and like I said, the longer you do it, I think the more, more, you, the more you make. So have a look at this little slideshow. I'll be back with a follow-up. Here's a pretty picture that sold this month. In fact, this image is the first sale of this month. And uh, it's a photo I took in May of 2012 while on a wilderness cruise in southeast Alaska. This is Glacier Bay National Park. To be specific, this is an image of uh, Reed Glacier taken with the Canon 5D Mark III and a 24 to 105 uh, L, F4L lens at 24 millimeters. And the image license uh, fee was a total of $307.20, um, which is pretty high. And uh, I'm assuming it was a commercial uh, use because it uh, did not say that it was editorial, but uh, there's not much more information than that. Um, so I'm not sure the specifics on how it's being used. But if you look at the image, uh, what you'll notice is there is a lot of negative space. So there's a lot of sky in this image. And of course, there's a reflection of the sky. So there is a lot of room for copy, for ad copy or whatever. Um, so that's one of the things when you're shooting is to, to think about uh, leaving room for copy. Uh, it will increase your chances of making commercial type sales. And of course, commercial sales bring in higher fees than editorial sales. Now here's the other side of the coin. Um, this is Montrose Beach on Lake Michigan on the north side of Chicago. And uh, 
they have colorful kayaks for rent there. So I shot this a few years back and uh, it, it licensed a year or so ago uh, with actually two or three others similar to this um, for like $2.99. And the thing is when, uh, a tr and they license for a travel website and a lot of photographers are familiar with that website, um, but they have a, a deal with Alamy and so they get bulk pricing. Um, it doesn't really bother me too much um, because they do license quite a number of images. And if it's in an area that I've uh, shot photos, uh, frequently they're mine. So you just have to figure that um, you're going to, in the course of selling stock photography, you're going to have your high sales and you're going to have your low sales. Uh, here's a image I enjoyed photographing, <laughs> obviously. Um, this is a stitch panorama um, of the Grand Canyon. Uh, at upper right, you, you can see the building with the turret. That is the El Tovar Hotel. And um, then you see Bright Angel Canyon across the, the Colorado River's Grand Canyon. Um, but this license for five bucks. And again, uh, this is sort of what you have to figure is you're going to give a mixture of sales. You're going to have mm, way more sales, like $50 and below, than you're going to have um, above that. And uh, the trick is to get sales. Because the more sales you get, the, the per, if you have a percentage that are going to be high dollar amount sales, uh, you obviously increase your chances if you're getting a lot of sales. So it doesn't bother too much. I really enjoyed taking that photo. By the way, that was taken with a GX85 and the 14 to 140 millimeter Lumix lens. And it's a three image stitch. Technology sells, and this image licensed for $125. Um, so if you're involved in a technological field, uh, I suggest that you look for things to photograph because um, the technical subjects work really well as stock. So what's going on here is, and this is about an 18, you know, coming up on, it's 18 year, year old image, shot with 20D and the original um, Canon EF 100 millimeter macro. So this is in a proteomics laboratory. It's actually, it was a company that was a contract research company. And a liquid sample of uh, that contains a protein that they're studying is being deposited on this plate and this this metal plate which is gold plated and you can see previous samples that have been deposited in the foreground they're they're out of focus um, so this is uh, the plates called a maldi plate so this is a technique called uh, maldi toff spectrometry uh, maldi toff mass spectrometry <laughs> And that stands for Matrix Assisted Laser Desorption Ionization Time of Flight Spectrometry. So it's a way of studying the actual structure of, of protein molecules. And Wikipedia has a good article on this, so I'll post a link to that in the description below. Here's an image that licensed last month for $75. And uh, I included it to just kind of be an example of knowing your home area. Uh, this is Devon Avenue. Um, it's a restaurant on Devon Avenue on the far north side of Chicago. Um, it's actually the West Ridge uh, neighborhood, but it's now called, also called on Google Maps, Little India. So the neighborhood uh, had a high percentage of Orthodox Jews for a long time. And then, um, you know, a couple decades ago, uh, you had, we had an influx of Indian and Pakistani immigrants. And so now there's a mix. And um, what's really cool is people get along. Uh, but here we have an Orthodox Jewish man who's walking past this uh, restaurant that serves both Indian and Pakistani food. Um, so being aware of what's happening around you and going on in your home area um, is kind of important because you're going to find that people want uh, images that illustrate changes that are happening. Do you like photographing animals at the zoo? Um, it can be fun, but what I suggest is you photograph the animals interacting with their keepers and trainers um, and even photograph people um, as they're viewing the, the animals um, because you're far more likely to sell an image like this than you are uh, of selling 
an image of the, uh, the seal by itself. Um, and this sold for $125 uh, last year sometime. Here's another image, um, kind of illustrates it, paying attention to what's going on around you. This was a protest march that um, was done with a permit, and it went from uh, Village Hall in Oak Park, uh, about a mile east, to the 15th District Police Station inside the city of Chicago uh, for a rally. And the commander of the 15th District came out and actually addressed the crowd, um, so it was all peaceful. And... Um, I took I have several images uh, during this thing, and uh, several of them have sold. This one is licensed for $125. When you're taking a scenic image, you got to remember um, there's more to an image than just it being a pretty picture because you have to think in terms of what's going on here. Think about the geology. So this is a scene in McHenry County, northwest of Chicago at a place called Glacial Park. And this little series of hills here with a trail running along the crest is what's called a, it's a glacial came. So if you were here 10,000 years ago at the end of the Ice Age, what you see is uh, <clears throat> a very high glacier uh, to the right with water flowing off the top of it. Um, and, of course, glaciers are full of stuff that they gouged up, right? So that stuff comes out, it's gravel, it comes out with the water and is deposited in mounds uh, at the edge of the glacier. So when you're keywording, you have to be thinking in terms of that in addition to the fact that it, you know, it's a nice view and it's nice having hills stick up above the flat Illinois, which is <laughs> what the glaciers did. They flattened Illinois and in some places left a uh, little hilly remembrances of their visit. Uh, so anyway, that's that's the thing to think about. This image licensed for a textbook for $95. And if you keep photographing the types of photographs that the end user is interested in using, you will find that once in a while, and probably more and more as you get better and better, you're going to have people photo uh, buy the photographs that you enjoy photographing, like monarch butterfly on this swamp milkweed weed plant. So, not saying that you should stop photographing things that you like photographing for the fun of it, but you need to be aware that there are all kinds of other things that are probably going to do much better in the stock marketplace than this sort of an image. But this image sold, and it sold for, uh, I think it was $119. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into um, the types of images that sell, what it is about an image that's uh, important. So not just, you know, a pretty picture, but there's stuff in there that is useful educationally. Um, you have to make sure that, I mean, Grand Canyon image, gotta have geology in there as a keyword, right? So um, those are the really important things. Again, it can be a lot of work sitting down and keywording, pretty much drudgery. Uh, I know there's automated keywording coming along. I know that the AI, like, you know, again, our phones now will make little slideshows on their own based on subject matter, but I don't think it's going to get to the point where you can actually click on an image and have you know, 25 keywords get popped into that image, and, and you still are going to have to go through it anyway because mistakes happen even with artificial intelligence. So anyway, hopefully this was instructional and informative to you, and um, I don't want to turn people off to the idea of doing this um, because uh, it is something that can be very rewarding. Um, when you see a fairly high dollar sale, when you check your account in the morning, that's always a good feeling. Uh, so, you know, keep at it. But don't be the average photographer. That's the problem. is because the average photographer is just not careful enough and is not being diligent and uh, keywording properly. Oh, no, by the way, one more thing. 
don't copy paste your keywords from some other photographer's images online. Don't do that. That is just not a good thing to do. And you can get nailed for it. Um, because if, if your agency finds out you're doing that, you're, you're, you're probably going to lose your account. And you got to be aware that some photographers will put a nonsense string of characters as a keyword just for tracking purposes. Some photographers will put their name as a keyword. Uh, that is frowned upon uh, to do that because uh, the advanced searches that are available will let people search by name for a photograph by a particular photographer. But let's just say you copy a bunch of keywords from an image from a photographer and you're not paying attention and isn't that photographer's names in there and that ends up on your image and you don't see it. Well, yeah, you don't want somebody else's name as a keyword, and it's a dead giveaway to your agency that you're cheating. So, yeah, don't do that. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. If this was helpful to you, hit that like button. It's a big help to me. Ring the little bell so that you know when I've got content up. I'm Todd Banner, and I will see you next time.